Zinc plays a critical role in your health and one of its most interesting benefits is its ability to raise testosterone. Understanding how exactly zinc does this can help you optimize your diet and supplementation to boost your hormone levels naturally. In this video, I will talk about how zinc works in the body, the ideal intake, the testosterone pathways it influences, and why it's essential to balance zinc with other nutrients like copper. Let's first talk about the role zinc plays in your overall health. Zinc is a trace mineral, meaning the body needs it in very small amounts, but that doesn't make it any less important. It's involved in immune function, DNA synthesis, and cell division. Without enough zinc, your body can produce new healthy cells, leading to all kinds of health issues. This is especially important in growth, which is why a zinc deficiency during puberty has been shown to stunt growth. Another well-known role of zinc is its contribution to a good immune system. Zinc helps produce and activate T cells, which are crucial for fighting off infections. A deficiency in zinc can make you more susceptible to colds, flu, and viruses. Lastly, zinc is also a key player in maintaining healthy skin and supporting wound healing. It helps synthesize collagen, which is necessary for skin repair. Without enough zinc, wounds may take longer to heal and you can run into skin conditions like acne. What about the zinc RDA and foods high in zinc? The recommended daily allowance for zinc is 8 mg per day for adult women and 11 mg per day for adult men. In an ideal world, these amounts would be enough to meet the needs of most people, but factors like diet, stress, and hormone levels will influence how much zinc you actually need. And it's often a lot more than the RDA. I will talk about supplementation later in the video. Some of the best dietary sources include red meats like beef and lamb, which are particularly high in bioavailable zinc. Other good sources are chicken, turkey, eggs, and certain seafoods like oysters. But, and this is very important, when evaluating a food, you always also need to look at the zinc copper ratio in a food. Both compete for absorption, so if something has a lot of zinc, but also a lot of copper, it isn't necessarily a good net zinc source. For example, as you can see from this list, oysters have a zinc copper ratio as low as 4 to 1. This would no longer be a good zinc source, since anything under around 8 to 1 is more of a copper than a zinc source. Also, if you're on a plant-based diet, it can be even more challenging to get enough zinc, because plant foods contain phytates that inhibit zinc absorption. On top of that, most plant foods also come with a lot of copper, which again blocks the absorption of zinc somewhat. So if you eat a lot of grains and legumes, you can run into the same problem I just talked about. For that reason, a zinc deficiency is a lot more common in vegetarians and vegans. This brings me to the biochemistry between zinc and testosterone, the main topic of this video. Zinc is crucial for the synthesis of testosterone. It acts as a cofactor for enzymes that are involved here, including the conversion of cholesterol to testosterone in the cells in your testes. There are several biochemical pathways that lead to your body making testosterone. One of them would look like this. From cholesterol to pregnenolone to 17-alpha-hydroxypregnenolone to DHEA to androstenedione to ultimately testosterone. Zinc is a necessary cofactor for the enzymes involved in the conversion of DHEA to androstenedione and in the last step from androstenedione to testosterone. It is also a cofactor in 5-alpha reductase, which helps convert testosterone into its more potent form, a dihydrotestosterone, DHT. DHT has come under a lot of scrutiny in recent years because of its role in male balding, but that's a topic for a different video. On top of that, zinc also plays a role in inhibiting aromatase, the enzyme that converts testosterone into estrogen. By reducing the activity of aromatase, zinc helps maintain higher levels of testosterone relative to estrogen, which is very important for men. Once you have understood the connection between zinc and testosterone, you also need to understand the importance of the zinc-copper balance. Zinc and copper have a unique relationship in the body, where they work against each other. While zinc supports testosterone production, as you just saw, copper favors estrogen retention. So it's essential to maintain a proper balance between these two minerals. I have a different video on the ideal copper-zinc ratio, and I like to measure it in the hair, not the blood, where around 8 to 1 would be ideal. 
so quite a bit more zinc than copper. In men with fertility, testosterone or libido problems, we regularly find lower ratios than that, even if their blood work is fine. This is also something that isn't always talked about in the literature. The research consensus is that zinc supplementation can help boost testosterone only in people with an existing zinc deficiency. But in people with adequate zinc levels, additional supplementation appears to have little to no effect. What these studies usually do, however, is to measure zinc in the blood and not take into account zinc antagonists like copper or certain toxic metals like mercury. If you remove those, which takes more than just a zinc supplement by the way, zinc can finally do its magic and we will definitely notice the effect. Another way of putting this is to distinguish between an absolute and a relative zinc deficiency. An absolute zinc deficiency happens when you aren't consuming enough zinc through your diet. But a relative deficiency happens when your zinc intake might be adequate, but the levels of zinc blockers like copper or mercury are too high. In this case, even if you're getting enough zinc, the high copper levels can offset zinc's benefits, leading to issues like increased estrogen retention. I had this and it led to gynecomastia and estrogen dominance, which only went away once I fixed my copper issues. Also, if you have copper overload, your body might produce testosterone normally, but it could be quickly converted into estrogen because copper supports aromatase. This can make it difficult to maintain healthy testosterone levels, if, even if your initial testosterone production is healthy. Great, let's now talk about supplements and how to supplement correctly for more testosterone. Zinc is arguably the most important nutrient for boosting testosterone, but simply taking a zinc supplement isn't a magic fix. It's crucial to make sure you're not deficient, but zinc alone usually won't do the whole job. What you need to do is to also watch out for zinc antagonists, like we just said. To really benefit from zinc, you need to lower your levels of all these antagonists, like excess copper and toxic metals. These are usually mercury and cadmium. They block zinc's effects and mess with your testosterone levels that way. This is often overlooked in the literature and kind of a blind spot. Third, think about other cofactors. For example, magnesium, vitamin B6 and vitamin D. These are all either enzyme cofactors or necessary for healthy testosterone function and balance. In that sense, ZMA is actually a pretty good supplement to start with. It has 30 milligrams of zinc, which is probably the maximum dosage that I would recommend to anyone who didn't test their nutrient levels first. Above that, I would be really careful and definitely recommend you test your vitamin and mineral levels first. And fourth, you also want to look at your cholesterol. Testosterone is made from cholesterol, so make sure you're eating enough quality fats. Keep in mind that cholesterol is only found in animal products. Fruit, vegetables, grains, and all other plants do not have preformed cholesterol. This explains why some people do better or worse on vegan diets. They're relying on their own body to produce all the cholesterol for them, which might not supply enough for whatever reason. Lastly, if none of this works and you are a severe case, you will probably need a complete nutritional healing program that looks at all of your nutrient levels and adjust them to your needs. With this, you can then basically rebuild your diet from scratch, taking into account your existing deficiencies and imbalances. I explain how to do this in my recovery program. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, zinc is the key player in testosterone production, but it should never be looked at in isolation. You need to understand what it does, which other nutrients or metals can block zinc's function, and also what other cofactors are involved in testosterone synthesis. Some people's bodies are naturally better at doing this, and they use zinc to its maximum effect. These are usually the people that notice 30 milligrams or more right away in things like a higher libido or a calmer mind. Other people where this isn't the case will have to reduce their copper or toxic metal load first before they can see any progress when it comes to zinc supplements. I hope you understand the zinc complexity now a little better and I will see you in the next video.